Namaste and welcome to the next episode of Yoga Vasishta. The unreliability of worldly things. It's so true. Everything in this world has a beginning and an end. So why should we care about it? Huh? Way back in the beginning of this channel, in our series, Being in the World, we identified caring about the world as the source of all existential problems. I mean, it's basic. <laughs> and since then, we have refined our view more and more, going through the existentialist views and then the teachings of the Buddha and then different meditational techniques. And finally, the work of Ramana Maharshi. And at the end, at the climax of it all, Yoga Vasishta. Huh? So in that way, our views, our practice has progressed through these different stages until we get to this point that the cause of all suffering is our care about the world. But how can we give up caring about the world if we have nothing else that we can care about that is reliable, that does give meaning and purpose to our existence, and also is a source of pleasure, inexhaustible, eternal pleasure. And that's Brahman. So in this series, which will be, I hope, the climax, ultimate climax of my work here, then we will examine the ways of attainment of Brahman. Of course, meditation is very important, but before meditation will have its final result, one must acquire right view. Right view is an attitude and it's also a, a set of beliefs or points of view about the world, about oneself, and about Brahman. So these have to be assimilated before the meditation will have its best effect. Huh? It's just like if a doctor tells you, you have to take this medicine to get cured, but it won't work unless you drink, um, I don't know, a liter of water beforehand. First, you have to drink the water, then take the medicine and you'll get cured. So meditation is like that. Meditation requires right view, just like the medicine we're talking about in the example requires that you drink water first. So how do we acquire right view? Primarily by associating with the wise and hearing from them, hearing from the great sages. Now the great sages have spoken and written many, many books for our benefit. And these have been passed down through the company of their disciples. So by their mercy, we can still associate with them, even if not directly. Of course, the face-to-face -face association is the best, if you can afford it. Or if it's important enough for you <laughs> to go and get it. But even through a book, a recording or a video, one can get the benefit of association with the great souls. So that's why we're going through this huge book, Yoga Vasishta, in some detail and highlighting the different episodes that bring out the important points of right view. So this unreliability of worldly things, huh? which is the, we're getting to the conclusion of Rama's monologue. Now we're, 
reaching the point where he's summing up all his attitudes about life and the world. So let's listen in. Thus my heart is consumed by the wildfire of those great worldly evils, and there rises in me no desire of enjoying them, as there rises no mirage from a lake. My existence on earth gets more bitter day by day, and though I have got some experience in it, yet its associations have made me sour as the neem plant by its immersion in water. I see wickedness on the increase and righteousness on the decline in the mind of man, which becomes more sour every day. Every day I see honor being eaten up by men arguing with one another, using harsh words as they crack nuts with their teeth. Equally prejudicial to our welfare is too much eagerness for royalty and worldly enjoyments. We lose our future prospects by the former and our present happiness by the latter. So we should see like this. We should see that too much care and attachment for worldly things is the ruin of our happiness. It's the devastation of our future prospects, our enlightenment, our liberation. And we should be very careful to avoid it. Of course, we have to eat and sleep. We have to have a place to live. We have to have some association, some relationships. Huh? That's required just to live, just to get by in life. But the real danger of these things is attachment to them. Because of attachment, then we try to increase them. Huh? If some food is good, more food is better, right? <laughs> but people die of obesity, of overeating. People get infections because of undigested food and so on and so on. So no, it's not true that more of a good thing is better. Not at all. Too much money makes a person hard-hearted and remote, uh, disengaged from life. But a not enough money makes a person greedy and lustful for more wealth. So there has to be a balance somewhere where in between where there's enough money to take care of the basic needs of life, but not too much money so that one becomes conceited or proud or vain as a result of riches. Similarly, with all other material enjoyments, food, sex, relationships, wealth, all these things, power, prestige, honor, and so on. Huh? Men who become too attached to honor think they have to dishonor others. So then there begins these tremendous fights and arguments that take up so much of people's time and energy. And it's just a waste. It doesn't do anybody any good. But simply, they are wasting their reputation in harsh words. That's all. Huh? Nobody likes someone who speaks harshly. Even though, for example, we have to use strong words here from time to time. Yet, we try to avoid putting down others. We try to go around uh, insults and negativity. And we try to concentrate on the positive. Although occasionally when somebody makes a stupid comment, <laughs> it's very hard to avoid being a little sarcastic. But even so, we don't try to put anyone down because everyone is on the path. Everyone is searching for enlightenment, but it's just their misconceptions that are stopping them. So, we try to uh, 
uh, build relationships and not break them so that people get a chance to hear. I feel no joy at the prospect of riches, but I enjoy solace in my own heart and mind. Frail are the pleasures of the world, and greed is altogether intolerable. The bustle of business has broken down my heart, and I know not where to find tranquility. Neither do I praise death, nor love my life. I remain as I do, devoid of all anxiety and care. What do I have to do with a kingdom and all its enjoyments? Of what avail are riches to me, and what is the end of all our exertions? All these are only the requirements of self-love, from which I am entirely free. The chain of births is a bond that binds all men by its strong knots of the senses. The best of men are those striving to break loose from this bondage for their liberation. So here Rama is giving his solution that he has arrived at through his own intelligence and the use of reason by observing the world and his own life and mind. Rama has come to the conclusion that these material enjoyments are the source of misery. And this is correct. But he still has not realized the full meaning or the answer to the cure for these questions. And Vasishta is going to fill him in on that, don't worry. <laughs> Yet it's very good to see that Ram, by his own intelligence, has come to the conclusion of correctly identifying the source of the problems. The source of the problems of life are lust, anger, and greed. And let's add to that the delusion of thinking that satisfying our desires is going to lead to happiness. It's not. But people are bound to the senses. The wheel of samsara, uh, birth and death in the material world. Because they are attached to the ego, thinking this is my body. And because they care about the body, they care about the world to satisfy the senses. And then greed makes them satisfy their senses more than necessary. And that leads to all kinds of conflicts in the world. Because actually, is God an irresponsible creator? Has he not given enough resources for the people who live on this world, on this planet? Of course he has. The birds, the insects, the plants, the animals all have their food and their places to live and so on by divine arrangement. And the same is true of humanity. But if some people hoard more than necessary out of greed, the rest of us are left to fight over the rest. So this disease of greed is a tremendous problem and it's the cause of so much suffering in human society, in human life. Because people are so attached to their bodies and their egos, then the desire to have more and more and more is going to arise in their minds. That's why the solution is, as Rama correctly states here, to become free from desire and free from ego. I who am devoid of desires would like to break this ornamental chain of worldliness that hangs about me like a deadly serpent, like a lion tears apart a net. O most learned sage, Scatter the mist that has clouded the forest of my heart. Scatter the darkness that has overcast my mind, 
by the light of true knowledge. There are no anxieties, O sage, which cannot be put to an end by the company of good-minded men. The darkness of night is dispelled by moonbeams. Life is as fickle as a drop of water in a mass of clouds blown by the winds. Our enjoyments are as unsteady as lightning flashing in the clouds. The pleasures of youth are as slippery as water. With these reflections in my mind, I have subdued them all under the province of peace and tranquility. So this is a wonderful statement that Rama, even at his young age, has conquered not only the senses, but ego and desire, which drives them. So he has actually come a long way towards solving the problems of life completely. But listen to what he's saying. He's asking the greatest sage, huh? Vasishta is the son of Brahma, who was born, was created consciously and deliberately to spread these truths all over the universe. So by approaching the greatest sage, Rama is asking for the benediction of true knowledge. He wants the complete knowledge. Huh? He's gotten pretty far all on his own, and that's very commendable. But now he wants to go the rest of the way. He wants that knowledge, knowing which there is nothing further to be known. That is transcendental knowledge. Huh? Divya jnana. And that knowledge leads directly to full liberation from samsara. Huh? One never has to be born again in this world. Once one transfers all his care, all his attachment, all his trust and desire from the material world, which is so unreliable, to God, Brahma. Huh? The Brahman is the vast source of everything, the reservoir of all existence. And as we've discussed so many times here, Brahman is nothing but sat chit ananda unlimited being, knowledge, and bliss. So by transferring all our hopes, all our cares, all our dreams and desires, and all our trust to Brahman, then we easily attain that great aim of human life, full liberation from material existence. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Harihi Aung. Karunar Navamai Kardakadinalgum. Aruna Chalashivam Yidam.